time since I've been online, but uh, I'm going to go for it. Uh, I've got a lot of requests <laughs> from, from my piece called The Christmas Tale of One Idiot, which I actually wrote last year. I just fixed it and enhanced it. And you can see I've lost some weight, lost quite a bit of balance. Actually, it's kind of coming off pretty fast. I'm very happy about that. Feeling a lot better. Uh, hopefully, we'll have all this stuff under control. So I'm hoping anyway. Um, I hope every I hope everybody has a, a very merry merry Christmas, uh, and a wonderful New Year this year. This last this last year, just wish we could have forget and, and move on. But you know, next year we'll probably have COVID twenty eight or something like that. Who knows? Uh, you know, the flu times two, whatever you want to call it. Captain Jack, <laughs> everybody remembers that movie. Oh man. Uh, so this year, let's go ahead and go forward with this. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna begin this in just a minute here. A Christmas Tale of One Idiot. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, screaming was heard as he's killing his spouse, with blood splatter on everything, including the mouse. The children upstairs are laid up in their beds, coughing, sneezing with COVID-19. Temperature soaring, breathing becoming harder. I'm sure Santa Claus will likely find them long dead. <laughs> Do I have your intention now? It's just a reminder that we now have two more days. To, well, actually, we have one night. Actually, Christmas is here. So where more suicides are recorded than any other day of the year. So when someone says to me, have a happy, happy holiday, I want to throw up, making me want to pick up a big old rock, wrap it in the prettiest Christmas paper, place a, bitty, a, birdie, <laughs> a pretty bow on it, then smile. And I throw it through their goddamn window while I'm screaming, here, bitch, here's your fucking ho, ho, ho. Then all the Christmas lights hanging everywhere you can see, every on everything they can find, making it look like a stupid Disney movie, causing the cost of electricity to go up, giving all the crooks, the ones in the suits, the greedy bastards, care about nothing but themselves. Besides that, it hurts my eyes so bad that I want to break every single bulb like a bubble wrapper. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Or start taking target practice and shoot every motherfucking one of them. Then take the wire that's that's a lot of copper for the scrappers out there. You know who you are. And wrap it around those executives' necks. The ones that make the prices that keep going higher and higher. Then hang them up by the chimney with care as I fill the house with gas and yuletide logs. And light it on fire causing a mile-wide explosion so Santa Claus would not miss out on the carnage. And so he can look down right at me and kiss my ass from the air. And then when the carolers come howling all those stupid songs, they hurt my ears, my ears wearing ridiculous clothes that a clown would not even wear, making me want to take my hose, turn it on full blast, and spray them down like two dogs humping in a partridge in a pear tree. Then go to my room and turn the lock, then place a note on my door that says, yeah, I killed Santa Claus right down Santa Claus Lane. So Christmas could, would be canceled for cutting me off on the road due to the fact that he's an asshole. So take your damn cheer and happy new year and shove it up your ass. I mean, everywhere you go, you'll see the best of all humanity right now. Putting up trees, going to church with all their shiny tinsel of red and green, buying overpriced gifts, standing in line for hours to buy presents with money they don't have to spend in the first place. Using all their rent and bill cash on people they don't even like or who don't even care about them. I mean, really. Who the hell needs 10 stuffed animals that cost 20 cents to make in all shapes and sizes, bending you over the table, costing ridiculous prices of ugly sweaters that make you sick or crappy tasting fruit capes that have been around since Nixon was in office? While they're killing trees, tearing down the rainforest, killing a filling up the dump with billions of tons of trash and litter. All for what? The Hallmark Channel creating the day of our Lord and King baby Jesus Christ and maybe even baby Yoda was born. Hell, I don't know. Another thing, you know, another thing, you know what I bet? I bet Jesus was pretty pissed off growing up when he was a kid. I mean, he was a kid after all. So he only got one gift with a card that said, happy birthday and Merry Christmas. Because if that was me, I'd be like, whoa, yo, hey, bitch. One gift? Holy cheap motherfucker. I will smite your ass and flood your crops. Hey, Dad, will you send down a plague of wasp? I mean, what's the deal with the holiday spirit? Because there's nothing at all to cheer about. I mean, the poor keep getting poorer, living on the streets. They got no money for presents. Hell, they can't even eat. 
You have the television showing all the specials, the ones where everyone gets all lovey-dovey and gives presents to everybody, making those unfortunate, unfortunate children feel like shit because of who they were born into. I mean, I guess they get the gift of their father being locked away in prison who spent all the Christmas money on cocaine, bail, and women for beating his mother half to death with nothing more but a crack or, crack or drug addict cast out on the floor in the kitchen. So, hey, kid, have yourself a merry little Christmas. I hope you get presents, but he won't. Instead, he'll be a foster kid living from home to home. Oh, and son, happy er, happy holidays, even though your parents died a day ago. Killed by a fucking drunk driver coming home from a Christmas party full of the holiday spirit and walked away without a scratch saying, I didn't do it. Here you go, kid. Your, your parents were in the car. And so are all your presents. But we did save some. They're a little soaked with guts and blood. But, hey, there's your dad's eye. Never mind. I'll take that. And then you have the ones at home who face the dark all alone. They want to laugh and smile but can't because of mental health. They have depression or anxiety or some other form of mental kind of disability. No one to help them. They never believe them. Only saying things like take a pill or 20. Just fake that smile until you can find them back, until you find them hanging by a rope by the chimney with care. Dead who knows how long they've been there. Holding the guns maybe still. Or been dead two weeks all red and green and that ain't Christmas spirit. That's blood splatter. Or sitting in a car that is full of presents and cookies and candy smothered and covered by carbon monoxide. And, oh, hear that Christmas music blaring full out of the radio. Happy New Year. Where you find the addicts on the streets trying to snort up all the white powder on the ice that has fallen. Are those heroes in places unknown fighting and dying for what? Jingle bells and IEDs singing all they want for Christmas. Is there singing all I want for Christmas? Are my arms and legs? They were blown away. When they stopped and surfed a foreign Santa and all his elves carrying 100 pounds of explosive and radioactive Christmas toys. So I say, screw the holidays. Take your cheers. I don't want to hear about the Rudolph or the snowman or how those little rich kids got $50,000 worth of toys. But threw them all away and killed their parents because they didn't get what they wanted. Take your jingle or I will kick your balls and tell Santa if he comes down here, he'll, he'll, see, he'll see the naughty side of me when I claw his eyes out and shoot every one of his reindeer and mount him on my wall. So all of you greedy, suit-wearing, bottom-dollar, soul-sucking corporations, stop shoving all your Christmas bullshit down the throats of those who have nothing at all to give. Stop harassing our kids and charging $40 to $50 at the overcrowded malls to see your crappy look and smells like you've been drinking, child-molesting, fake Kris Kringle, figuring the kids will throw a fit so parents will have to pay. You can take your ho-ho-ho and shove it up your holiday spirit and go back to hell with the other demons. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Yes, that was my my holiday cheer there. Um, I'll do one more. It's uh, the 12 days of Christmas out on the streets. Give me one second to bring that up, guys. I was already with the other one, but this one I wasn't. Um, here we go right here. Let's see what's going on. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12 car seats jacking, 11 pills of pop, and 10 pitfalls fighting, 9 kegs of beer, 8 years of misery, 7 stab wounds bleeding, 6 months of rehab, 5 days of detox, 4 years probation, 3 officers knocking, 2 shotgun blasts, and it missed me by a mile, and really a bad case of herbies that hurts like hell when I pee. That's my 12 days of Christmas. So... I hope everyone is going to have a wonderful day, and maybe hopefully next year things will be better for everybody all the way across the board. Um, you know, I love you guys. I know I've been around a lot. I've been going through a lot of personal stuff. I've been sick. I've been trying to get better, which I've lost 35 pounds. Thank God. <laughs> it's been it's been crazy, but I am starting to lose it with this new doctor of mine, and um, he knew exactly what's going on. And believe me, <laughs> I'm doing it. So I am not going to, I really want to live. I'd like to see writers, you know, high school graduation. I'd like to see my other boys, you know, one day, finally, soon, and we'll see what happens. So I got to say, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. And I, I couldn't have asked for anything better with the, with the better fans, you know, with the fans. And I'm going to, uh, if you guys, you do, okay. <laughs> I guess I'm going to keep going. This is like, I want to kiss you. I don't make love to you like it's our first time every day, all the time. I want to go down on you with my head. No, we're not going to read that one. Sorry, kids. <laughs> Grandma, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go with the attic. So 
My eyes opened slowly up to the view of a dirty street somewhere. I looked down and see that someone stole the shoes that were on my feet, my money, my jacket. So I'm shivering and it's so cold. I'm broke. No more dope. Feeling sick and hungry. Stomach hurts. Wondering where in the hell I am this time around. So I close my eyes, hoping it's another nightmare, but it's not. So I punch the ground and break my hand and the tears begin to fall and then splash on the dirty ground. So I start to scream out loud to nothing at all. But the echoes of my own voice looking around, seeing the shadows of myself looking back at me, shaking its head as if to say, what in the hell did you do this time, you loser? You'll never amount to anything. Hearing the condescending voices of my father while seeing the disappointed look on my mother, it's not their fault. Well, he's your son. Then I realized that I need to get high, but I'm so goddamn tired and have no more strength to continue on fighting all the demons that, that <laughs> fighting all the demons that we ourselves all make. All the battles raging on every single day, not falling back down to the dirty ground on my knees as I look up to beyond and pray to God or someone else to take my pathetic life, and I don't care how. Shoot me with a gun or stab me with a knife. I see no end in sight. I have no more hope to hold on to anymore, the strength to continue on in this life. Waking up every single morning, always feeling like I'm dying each more with, with the passing of each day. All the while, I keep reaching out to something I shouldn't touch. So I make another empty promise, swearing to myself, I promise just one more drink, one more drink and one more shot to calm my nerves. And then I'll quit tomorrow. As I'm swearing at myself that I should have listened to what I said the last time. All the while, I keep making excuses, but in actuality, in actuality I'm falling faster and deeper into the dark that is now below me, straight down into the fiery pits that are coming from the depths of my own living hell. So I try to fight back this time, even harder, but fail miserably, causing a pain to begin coming from somewhere in my head and the center of my chest, growing strong going stronger every day that is making me start to go absolutely insane deciding that i need to now self-medicate only fooling myself and everyone around that i will be okay i'm not as i'm not as the darkness just will not stop attacking me as it surrounds me now part of me living in my dreams turning them into my nightmares that scares the hell out of me while I sleep. So now I need to get high so I can stay up and not ever go to sleep and try to deal with it by ignoring it, masking all the truth with the lies of who I really am, thinking I'm better than anyone. But really, I'm just an addict who's on the run from the shadows that now follow me and the evil inside of screaming loud as I can to the sound of a silent please crying out for help that I can't ever see living in a life that was meant for the dead and dying. All alone with no friends or family, abandoned by all those who I'd ever loved the most or family abandoned by all those who i'd ever loved the most for i have systematically in a short amount of time destroyed all their trust watching as they all as all my dreams now crumbled to drown and turned to dust barely alive while living on the precipice of a certain death hiding from the reality of what is really is a disease or a disorder of the heart mind and soul and one without a cure that is something that we all now should fear if you become infected I fear that it's already too late for you, as it has already dug your grave six feet down, waiting for you. See, once it has its grips on you, it's too late, my friend. You are lost deep down somewhere in the depths of hell, married to your demons who will now control you while they feed slowly upon your soul. Laughing as you're dying a little more each day until the who you once were and used to now used to be are now just faded away as you become just another forgotten memory whose name time forgotten will never care about except the few who knew you saying what a shame a waste of a life will suck my dick as i start to um, what the bitch waste of life taken away all my waste of life i abuse my life and your wife sometimes and daughter <laughs> that's pretty bad i know i get it uh let's see here Mm, thank you very much, uh, you know, Richard. I've been reading your work for over two years now, and I first I want to thank you for your honesty and your soul. It really amazed me how much emotion that you put into your poems, and thank you. I appreciate that. And this is just Christmas time, so you know, giving advice, giving a minute, giving a shit, giving a smile, giving some love, giving time, giving happiness. No matter what you give, at least giving is a gift. Remember that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read this one, too, and uh, it's called Friends at Home. Sitting on a bench at the park all by myself one day, feeling like I was all alone and a little afraid of what was to happen in the coming days, so I closed my eyes for just a few minutes 
And right away, my memories came back to me, bringing with them all the painful images and mistakes I have ever made along with those feelings that went with them. So I tried really hard to open my eyes, but I could not. To my surprise, thoughts, the thoughts now in my mind took over and they kept looking back on the life that had once had back in my past, and all the chances that I had to do or become just about anybody or anything at all. And then it started showing me all the choices I had ever made back then that I caused me today to fall flat on my ass. It makes me laugh out loud. And then I cried real hard and I felt all the pain all over again. And the joy from the births of all my boys and breakups of my wives are still hurts my broken heart today. It showed me so much, but I think out of everything that I missed the most were those days when my closest friends were really close and a time that we all would go to the rodeo on a Friday night or to the weekend show while I would ride a bull or two, hit the ground hard, dust myself off, look up into the crowd, smile while they all laughed at me, then go out dancing all night long, have a few too many drinks while on the dance floor we waltzed around my good friend Mark's bar, shots uh, doing shots with howie david pouring carry or, or <laughs> pouring carry dave debbie serving while al was bouncing as the music was jamming by the winslow band or even rick tucker damn that man could play we had rob and julie and dennis joyce bobby stevie renita and bob and mary god rest their souls there were many more who were fame and lore from those days gone by who listened in pain when i got up to sing I Got Friends in Low Places by Garth Brooks. Or did my dance on the pole to the song that played that funky music, White Boy, for the crowd who always cheered me on. Now I understand what real friends are, and I cry for those who are gone. I only wish I would have told them just how much they meant to me. Then a feeling of a kind of peace came over me. And you see in our... It <laughs> came over me with my eyes still closed, but now I could somehow see that in our lives we live, which makes sometimes seem like there are many. There are so many choices that we all need to make with some that are wrong and some that are right. Either way, life is one big constant fight. So just take it one day at a time. It, to just take it one day at a time until the very end. And if one day you feel like you are all alone, remember, you'll always have God and all your friends back home. Uh, another little short poem. There are some days I feel like rain that has forgotten to fall. For others, I feel like the wind that cannot blow. Even days where I feel like the sun that will not shine. But mostly, I feel like the earth who's dying more with each passing day. This was called I Still Have a Photograph. I still have a photograph of you that I will always carry stored forever deeply within my heart. So when I close my eyes to sleep, it appears every single night when I dream of you and me, like we used to be not all the very long ago. I also have all the many memories of you and I that are printed deep down in my soul that I can wrap close around me like when you used to hold me when the nights got lonely and so very cold. So that if you ever ask me how I'm doing, I would say I was doing okay, but the truth, sweetheart, is if you could only read my mind, you would know that I was lying because there's not a single day that goes by that I am not thinking about you. And so, you know, even after all this time, you were always on my mind. Somehow, in some way, you are still locked away deep inside of me while I still in the middle of the night wait for your call, just hoping that you might think about me when all your dreams don't work out like you thought they would. While I lay here all alone in the dark, wishing you were right here next to me with your head, head on my chest, listening to the beating of my pounding heart with a smile across your beautiful face, knowing that it still and always still skip a beat just for you. And um, yeah, if I got the letter here on December 11th, guys. Um, so it says, I'm writing to inform you that your nomination for the 2021 and 22 Texas Poet Laureate was not among those selected as a finalist. <laughs> the Texas Commission on the Arts converted a group of professionals in poetry to review the nominees and select a short list of finalists from a large pool of very competitive nominees. The panel gave care careful consideration to each of the nominations. In the end, your nomination was not among those selected as a finalist. Especially during this hard year, and I wish all the, the artists could convey all the best news, but I'm sorry, but this one does not. I hope you will remember that it is quite an honor just to be nominated for the Texas State Artist. It is a reflection of your hard work and dedication to advancing the arts in Texas. On behalf of the TCA, I wish you all the best in your artistic career and future endeavors. Three times strikeout rule. <laughs> 
Oh, man. Uh, another one, Mr. Uh, Niddle, the conflict you have with demons and angels in heaven and hell is one that dates back to the beginning of all mankind. Do not ever lose hope, for God only chooses those the souls. They can never be beat, and yours is a fighter that will never give up, no matter how much it is thrown on you. Yes, you may stumble, and yes, you may fall, but my dear friend, you always are able to stand back up and stand tall. May you always shine in his light. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Maybe one more before my eyes start going crazy. I think there's something in the air. <laughs> this one's called intoxicating. Your very essence is so very intoxicating. Cause we become drunk by all of your beauty as it is always on my mind. When I begin to think about every sexy single inch of your body as I undress you ever so slowly while a blindfold covers your eyes in the darkness so that you can gain a certain kind of trust of what we have. So as my pen begins to spill all the ink that now covers your bare naked skin and it starts to write a story of what, what you do to me. Starting on the back of your neck, just behind your ears, where my lips start a journey of a painting of an ever ending lifelong tapestry of a deeply mutual understanding between you and I. Feeling the warmth of your soft, supple skin ever so gently while kissing just ever so softly at the nape of your neck. Then quietly whispering with a single breath without saying any words at all, telling you what's coming next. Just as my trembling hands come up from behind you, exploring with my hands a design to hold your beautiful bare breasts, feeling them rise and fall with your every single breath. Just as your nipples become, begin to say, oh, baby, please. Yes, while becoming alive as they have their own mind. So very erect as my lips continue to tickle as I softly nibble right be behind your left ear lobe. Then as you feel the rising strength of my poet's pen slightly brush up against your lower back, causing you to arch up, begging me to react while letting out a low moan, a sign of poetic kind of kind that heats up <laughs> to a page between your thighs. Whoops, sorry, kids. <laughs> but I forgot about that one. Uh, Bacon's brother. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? We might just have to skip that one. I don't think this is a PG. I think this is a real, more like a G-rated show. <laughs> we'll do that one next time, later on in the night, not on Christmas Eve. Oh, uh, let's see here. We all understand the grief and the sadness when someone we love passes away because our hearts are meant to break. But just know they are a better place with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So instead of living your life in death, rejoice in your life to live. I wrote that. I did write that. <laughs> here, this one is... Uh, for some, my current situation, actually. It's called Beauty to Me. Beauty to me is not only what you see on the outside, for I have seen and been with some very beautiful women in my life. No, for me, true beauty comes from way deep down inside as it's your heart, mind, and soul. A woman who has a heart filled with nothing but love and understanding and cares about everyone that she may meet, always giving nothing but undying love and pure affection would certainly be hard to beat. A woman who can think with her own mind, making decisions that at one time used to be left to the man would definitely be, without a shadow of a doubt, have my attention, please. While playing chess, as she is cooking dinner all the while on her computer, reading emails, deleting all her spam, now a woman who can listen to her own soul knows most definitely how to speak right to me. As we can sit down and write all of our new books of beautiful new poetry. Now, I have met some very beautiful women and like actresses that live in Hollywood, even some beautiful princesses that lived in Tom, in Tom Cruise neighborhood. Those were just mean and nasty. While to me, they were as ugly as could be. Long blonde hair with sky blue eyes do not make a beauty queen, nor do big round breasts, skinny jeans, or even plastic anything. To find a woman's true beauty, you must look deeply into her eyes, for there you will find the key to the most beautiful treasures that she hides inside. Thank you. <laughs> All right, one more. Every time that we begin to fall in love, it becomes a gamble or a risk that we all must take, never knowing if it's going to be a true love or just a, re a reasonable facsimile that contains almost every piece and facet of what true love is really supposed to be. You see, love is what makes humans who and what we truly are and where we are going in this life and even though love is only just a four letter word it is a very complex one it can mean so many things to so many people i think it has gotten lost over translation and time you see love is not a word that you're going to throw back out there because you all been conditioned to repeat it back like as if we were parrots 
doing a trick. For example, there are so many different types and even meaning that come with a whole lot of feelings, which, which continues to leave us reeling, like the love between two star-crossed lovers, between a mother and her son or daughter, between a brother and a sister. You cannot forget the one between a dog and his master. Or even my love of an early morning fresh cut grass, spring baseball game and the Dodger Stadium and a hot dog with a few cold beers with all four of my sons. Love can be a war, which can also end one too. Many songs have been written about it, every type, but Pat Benatar says it best for love is a battlefield. This one's called Love's War. Good night, sweetheart. I hope that you sleep well. So when you finally close your eyes, tired eyes, and start to dream tonight, it's one of the beautiful, sunny, sandy white beaches and clear, warm waters that are as green and bright as the sparkles that once lit up your beautiful eyes. I also want you to know that I will always remember that day that we met, just like it was only yesterday when we looked in each other's eyes and got real close and kissed like there was nobody else around. I remember that I first asked you for permission and then without any kind of hesitation, you looked deeply into my eyes and melted into my arms, submission with no restrictions, moan, yes, baby, oh yes, and you are now my addiction without any conditions. Now take me. Now, <laughs> now let me take you, take your dictation without any shame, amen. Then all the very moment and all of its moments, we realized that we were paralyzed as we were then baptized in that sweet, in the sweet of our love. Uh, what the hell? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Man, I was on a roll. While you and I began to idolize each other, while we analyzed as we agonized, and it kind of scared us, but that didn't stop us from walking down the aisle listening to the wedding bells. Yet here we are, both of us injured, with many of tall tale signs right before our eyes of the many battle scars of where we have been and what we have heard and seen and to whom it is we both are. Just like two soldiers coming home from different sides from a broody, bloody war with neither side a winner, both have been beaten down by each other and bruised from what I call love's war. I have always in my heart loved you and just as I know that you have also loved me in your own special ways, but it was always at different times and in many places when one was ready, the other turned their faces. And that, my dear, is one thing that I know we always can agree on. It is so very sad. Huh? It's so very obvious that we have always learned. Oh, man. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, place that when one was ready, the other turned their faces. And that, dear, is one thing that I know we can always agree on. It is so very obvious that we have always loved to hate each other. Now we even hate to love one another. So now we just go back and forth like two fighters locked away in a cage in a death match and a death do us part type of fighting while going round after round, both being pounded by love that is blind, blow after blow until we're holding each other up until someone cries out uncle. So let us both together throw up the white flag and call a truce and not go any further with you and I as we declare a truce without a winner. And then this love's war right now, then turn into the opposite side and walk away while we can still walk it all. Let's declare that we have come to the realization that no matter how much dedication to the medi mediation that our two sides will never again get along. When all the smoke clears and the last words are never heard, I just want you to know that I understand that I am not angry about who, why, and how, for I will always remember the night we heard the thunder roar and saw the lightning flash and felt the shaking coming from deep down in our souls from that very first kiss we ever kissed to the last one we have will ever taste on our lips. All right, one more. <laughs> I unlocked my front door with a loud click. Then turn the knob slowly, opening it, letting the sunlight wash over my face, melting away the darkness that, that had been covering my skin, melting it away, causing a smile to form across my face, feeling like a butterfly emerging from its cocoon, allowing me to spread my wings and feel free. And then I take a deep breath and slowly I let it out again, putting one foot in front of the other, day in and day out, ever since you've left me. I'm just trying to figure it all out, taking one day at a time relearning how to do things all by myself like a child all over again and that is one and that is only just me again not not you and I oh, okay it has been hard <laughs> oh I have to lie about stuff oh my god by time referring how to do all things by myself like a child all over again now that it's only just me again not you and I 
it has been hard. I will not lie. But you know what? I'll be just fine. I did it before you came along, and I will do it once again. Just you wait and see, because I have lived my life just as happy as I could ever before it was ever you and me. Oh, my heart? Well, it's been broken many times before, and I'm quite sure that it will not be the last time either. And I got through it breathing and still alive, just like I will when I get over you. But you know, but you must know that I'll always care no matter where you go or even what you may do. For you are now and will forever be a little part of me, as I have also left a piece of me in you. For you see, when, you, when people come to go in your lives, either by fate or maybe even chance, no matter how long they, they were around or even why they were there, we learn something along the way from those individuals to help us out get through our journey until the very end. And oh, I might hurt and I might feel the pain coming from a love that has died and the ache of a loneliness for I do not know how long. But we will all eventually heal. It really is just a matter of time. So we can all be ready for the next person who may come in our lives and who knows what they will teach us. But I do know one thing for sure, either way. Life goes on. So I breathe in and I slowly let it out putting one foot in front of the other day in and day out. Okay. Uh, anybody got any questions? Because it'll be under me. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, you know, life can be crazy sometimes. And I guess we just need to deal with it. Even myself. Um, I love you guys. I You'll be seeing more of me. Um, I have new books. I have friends books to finish. I have a lot of things going on and I'm wasting time. So I love you. Peace, love and poetry. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to all and to all. Good night.